welcome to the 24 Frames Podcast. I am your host, Paul Hunt, and joining me today is founder and managing editor of New Slang Lubbock, Thomas Mooney. Thomas, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Now, tell our audience, for those that may not be familiar with New Slang, what it is exactly. Well, it's a online publication right now that um, discusses and talks about Lubbock and Panhandle music in in the area. And what just what are some of the characteristics? What would define Pan? Who are some artists? What would be the music that defines this region? Well, uh, like right now, I think it's we're, we're kind of split in between two areas of what Panhandle music is. Um, you have the the classic version, which is the, the Terry Allens, Joe Ely's, Flatlanders, Main Brothers. Uh, and recent artists like William Clark Green and uh, Red Shahan, Brandon Adams, who have kind of defined what panhandle music is in the modern era. Absolutely. And what what was your motivation for starting New Slang? Um, really, like it just started out as I was missing too many shows that I didn't know about that I really wanted to go to. I was a journalism major and uh, just kind of started. Hey, why? OK, why can't I do this? essentially yeah. nice that's fantastic I, I I don't remember how I came across it but when I discovered it I was like oh this is the greatest thing ever <laughs> it tells me about everything that I want to know right here so so one I think it's fabulous I think you're doing a wonderful job you're pretty much a team of one I know people contribute mm-hmm. here and there well, but thank you yeah, you're, but. you're pretty much a team of one um, let's let's talk a little bit you released the top was it 50 songs uh, this year we did top 100 it songs it was 100 okay and, sorry I couldn't remember uh, also, like, top 25 albums and 15 EPs, I believe, yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of music to listen to, um, but it also shows how productive this area is with mm-hmm. with original music. What What are some of the highlights of last year's Panhandle music scene? What were some of the things that, that really stood out to you? Well, um, I think that the, the, the best of this year, that the top of my list was um, Ryan Colwell, his album called Flatlands. He's a guy from Perryton, Texas, who is now located in Nashville. Um, his record really captured uh, the Flatlands in the bare bones, Bruce Springsteen, Nebraska kind of way that uh, if you talk to any farmer out here, could just immediately relate to by these personal stories in these songs. And uh, Red Shahan finally was able to get his first solo record out. And um, that also captured a certain essence of what it is to be a somebody in Texas, being a... uh, an artist. And do you see, are there some um, distinct differences? Maybe, you know, Austin, they claim to be the -hmm. the music capital of the world, um, things of that nature. What sort of distinguishes us, this area, that's different from maybe Central Texas? I think like at this decade and a half, it's been the songwriters. It's, uh, there's been a focus on what a songwriter is here that when you go to any venue, whether it be Blue Light or, you know, Obar on 34th Street or any, essentially any venue here, it's focused on the songwriting aspect, um, the lyrics, and uh, a, a giant aspect of that is the, uh, I guess, you develop a tough skin playing some places where they're not gonna be paying attention to you and you you just learn how to you know persevere and you're probably going to get down and you may decide like i may i need to i'm just not cut out for this but then you know maybe a couple of weeks go by and you you realize yeah i can really i can do this and this is just part of the process you know um i i think that's really from the last 15 years that's what Lubbock has kind of become is a uh, the the refocus on being a songwriter first and not necessarily uh, a band per se. Yeah, and you mentioned the Blue Light, uh, probably the premier venue in Lubbock for mm-hmm. live music. Is that fair to say? Uh, I would say so. 
Yeah, and, and that's not to take anything away from other venues. There's a mm-hmm. lot of great places to see great music here in Lubbock. And that's one of the fascinating things about it. I've had people tell me, yeah, you're not going to become rich, but there are people who live as musicians mm-hmm. in Lubbock, Texas. That's a pretty fascinating thing, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me a little bit about the, the maybe the, you talked about the emphasis on singer, songwriter, or songwriting in general. Mm-hmm. How have you seen the Blue Lights competition evolve? Who are some of the stars that have kind of come out of that? And, and, and what does that sort of, having that venue and having that competition, what does that mean for our musicians here? Well, I think like really right now, uh, the blue light is a is a rock. Um, it's gonna. It's always. It's been a, a place that songwriters can go to uh, and, and know that it, that it's open. And they've they've not really changed the. Uh, I guess like their their formula. They've they've not been, you know, a, a karaoke bar or anything like. They've not been a, you know, you know, playing nineties club hits or anything like that. They've always just been a. A place where songwriters can go to as far as the songwriter competition it's it's really grown uh over the last few years um we're starting to see more people from out of town come in and you know if you if you go back and look at who was even entered in those first years though you go oh like this person didn't win but they you know like grady spencer right now he i think he placed third in one of the competitions and uh, you know, he's doing really well right now. Like Paul Cawthon, who uh, used to be in this band called Sons of Fathers, but now he's uh, doing solo stuff. And that guy is just blown up. And uh, there's just been so many uh, people who technically didn't win the songwriter competition, but, you know, they, they've they gone on to do big and better things. So it's... Yeah. That that's awesome, yeah. So uh, I mean, it's a it's a great thing. I know that in full disclosure, we we go we partnered last year. We partnered. Mm-hmm. We filmed every night, and then we've we've done some work with the winners to kind of highlight them on our air. Um, and part of that is because the talent so it's so rich in talent. There are so many great talented songwriters mm-hmm. who show up for that. It's really a wonderful thing. No, oh, yeah, absolutely. This week, the Blue Light is featuring Lubbock Music Week. You've been, have you gone every night or? Uh, yeah, I've been every night what so are some, far. What are some of the highlights of that? And, and, and what, um, I guess what is some of the, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, is one, it shows you how diverse and how, I guess, deep of a bench we have as far as great musicians who can come out and play. But what, if, what are some of the highlights of, of Lubbock Music Week? What have you seen that's really impressed you? Well, um, the the week overall, like like you said, it, it's it's about Lubbock music. Uh, more specifically, it's it's kind of about bands who have uh, started out in a way at Blue Light, or not necessarily established themselves at Blue Light, but uh, played their, a lot there. Cut yeah. their teeth at Blue Light, yeah. essentially. Uh, so. Uh, William Clark Green and Dalton Domino last night, uh, they played and it was, you know, it, it's one of those, uh, those moments where you go, oh, these guys, uh, specifically William Clark Green has, oh, he's not just a, another Lubbock songwriter, quote unquote, he's, you know, a, a big thing, not just in Lubbock, but in Texas or in, uh, what you would call Texas country, Americana, what have you, um, you know, like there's, and it was just, it was an acoustic show. He's up there by himself or with, with his guitar player and people were singing along to songs that aren't just off the new record, but are on his first record, you know, that uh, everyone, you know, claims to have, but really probably doesn't have. Uh, you know, they're singing along to songs like that, uh, that are off old records. Uh, and I, I think like just this week is a... Um, it's been a it's going to be a uh a good highlight of what uh if you know if you if an alien landed here and was like for whatever reason they were asking so what is a uh, lubbock music of the last five years or something like that you would oh okay well let me just show you this right here this week of music you know uh wednesday tonight it's going to be a song swap between six songwriters um Thursday is Flatline Calvary, who 
Uh, they've they've only released one EP so far. They're working on their first full length, but you know they they they're geared up to be one of the next yeah big bands. You know, I, I really enjoy Flatland Calvary. I I just discovered them at the end of of last year, mm-hmm. and holy cow, that's a great record. And the one thing that really struck me is like I am more of an Americana fan. Like I mm-hmm. like the Avid Brothers and things yeah. of that nature. Um, and so I tend to lean that way. Jason Isbell, those types of things. Flatland is like right on this verge of like pop country. I, I don't know else how to describe it, but what you would mm-hmm. hear on a top 40 country radio yeah. station. But man, the and, and they're so young, but the writing is really something else. And mm-hmm. it's, it's really strong. It's not just we're having a good time and the other stuff you hear on pop country radio are really... Uh, uh, a lot of pop country now is really hitting on stereotypes of what you think of people yeah. who listen to pop. Yeah, they, I mean, they have that list of like, okay, criteria check. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and they almost have that sound, but they're right on this line where, man, it's really good. It's really good music with mm-hmm. pop sensibilities. Yeah. And that's one of those things is like people think of pop music as a, a taboo in yeah. country music or something. And it's uh, anybody who says that you show them a playlist of 90s country or 80s country or 70s country and they they love that stuff uh so which that was country, pop country at its at yeah, the time that it at, came at the out time, yeah. yeah uh right now like i think what what flatland is has been able to do is uh have their roots based in uh roots music essentially yeah you know there's there's fiddle and there's uh you know the, the guitar is, uh, I guess, like the tones and the textures of the guitar are within a range that that feel right to what you would describe as earthy or roots rock. But you know, there 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 are those pop sensibilities to it as well. That there's the right mixture of this and that to create something. Yeah, because they, I mean, a, so a lot of their subject matter fits right in with college kids mm-hmm. party and having fun in the summer and stuff like that. But there's a lot of introspection there in the writing that I think kind of elevates it above just that sort of base. Mm-hmm. We like to have fun in the summer. There's a lot of love and loss and kind of diving into what it means to lose and to think mm-hmm. about lost love and those types of things yeah. that I think pop country is missing. Yeah, well, there's a... I was actually going to do this and I just scrapped the idea, <laughs> but I was instead of like describing all these albums that came out this year in these long form paragraphs, I was going to do just like six word, uh, descriptions, oh, nice. like three, three sentences or not even necessarily sentences, but thoughts on, uh, in, in six words or less. And one of them for that flatland record was, uh, um, it was something like love is easy until it's not, which is a, a I guess is a way to describe what, you would think of summer love as like a summer fling is it oh it's fun and easy until it's not until it's real yeah and then then it becomes a either a, a good thing or a, a heartbreak you know absolutely so. yeah and 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 they i mean and he really dives into that and their their lead man is clito cadero yeah i'm probably saying that wrong so i apologize <laughs> um got a great voice mm-hmm. he, and and his voice too is one of those things that bridges between being very pop sounding while also being grounded having some of those earthy tones mm-hmm. i really enjoy his voice yeah there's a and i'm gonna be still in this uh but doug psalm who i don't know if, if you're familiar with doug psalm like sir douglas quintet um texas tornadoes he had yeah. a, this quote about if you're a in Texas, you you have to have one of two kinds of voices, and that's either East Texas rust or West Texas <laughs> dust in your voice. And, I like uh, that. Yeah, yeah I, once I heard that, I actually heard that from uh, Kevin Russell of Shiny Ribs, and I was like, I'm stealing that. Oh yeah, I love that Shiny is, Ribs. That's yeah. a that is a great line. I don't care who you are. Uh, and there's you know he's from Midland. And there's a little bit of a West Texas dust in his. It's a little dry. Which if if, if you think about it, like. Terry Allen, yep. Joe Ely, Butch Hancock, all those guys have that they do. dryness to yeah. their voice. Which, uh, on the other side, the other perspective is uh, East Texas Rust, where George Jones has that whiskey rich, uh, kind of sharp, yeah, yeah, feel to his voice, you know. Yeah. So, but. Yeah, that's very cool. And and what what sort of you know in, in, in all your travels and, and you're a great student of music too. Um, what 
what kind of defines Lubbock music? Like what, what is it about? And you've talked to enough people too. Mm -hmm. What, what is it out here that makes people grab a guitar and and sing? Well, uh, I'm probably not going to say anything different than anyone else has, but I think it's just that there's nothing else to do, especially, uh, you know, from the time of Buddy Holly and Bob Wills to to the mid '90s, there, you know, this was a dry county, dry or dry city at least. Uh, there's nothing else to do other than to play music, um, and honestly, like I think part of what has made um, a lot of the the great artists of this area is that conflict between the town being a conservative town and uh, these people who are um, not necessarily rebels, but like they're rebels because they picked up a guitar and decided to sing about stuff around them, you know? Yeah. Uh, Buddy they Holly with the status quo. Yeah. Uh, you know, Buddy Holly picking up a, a Fender, you know, uh, that was, you know, oh my gosh, like I can't believe he's playing, you know? Uh, you know, that, that just going against the establishment was a, uh, had an impact you know um and honestly like i think a big part of uh where those roots came from is uh this is a conservative area and that that means a lot of people going to church and that means music involved and um so i think you a lot of people learned music from from church and just took that those little roots of those little points of uh you know, gospel and uh, old country kind of things and turned it into what they could, what what they were wanting to do. Yeah, what we kind of now talk as a Lubbock sound. One thing that you've kind of pointed to is, you know, you talk to so many people who act as though Lubbock music happened, Mm -hmm. that it's not happening. But you've sort of pointed to the fact that it is happening. Mm-hmm. And I think the Lubbock Music Week is a good good celebration of that. Who are some artists that you really enjoy that you would kind of point people towards that they should discover their music if they haven't yet? Um, I kind of feel like the, like, I don't know, the four or five most important, quote unquote, uh, songwriters of the last 15 years or so has have been... Daniel Fluid of Three Short Cowboys, Brandon Adams, um, William Clark Green, Red Shahan, uh, give or take. The, like they have really kind of Charlie Shafter as well. They they kind of established what the the modern songwriter is uh, as far as being here in Lubbock. Like Three Short Cowboys, as a band, I feel pushed uh, what you could be as a band here in Lubbock. They sounded so much like Lubbock, Texas, and also so not like Lubbock, Texas at the same time. Uh, like Colt Miller on guitar was just creating these uh, textures that, that felt so much bigger than, uh, just as big as the Lubbock sky. Like where the band was, you know, on the, on, uh, the surface and his guitar playing was just as big as the Lubbock sky is, you know, like it's, uh, I feel like that sound was, uh, was an important aspect of what, what Lubbock music has become. Brandon Adams, I felt, I feel, uh, he really kind of was able to push, um, what being a singer songwriter is and, uh, having more of a rock influence, and that that really has influenced other guys from Dalton Domino to No Dry County, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, absolutely, that's fantastic. And and finally, as as we close out here, um, Blue Light all week. It's Lubbock Music Week. We're recording us on a Wednesday. Hopefully, we can get it up today. If not, it might be Thursday. Flatland Cavalry, who we spent a good time talking mm-hmm. about, is Thursday. What? Do you, who's on the docket Friday and Saturday? Do you know? And yeah. if yeah, you got to look it up. Look it up. No problem at all. I actually pulled it up right. Like that's what I was. Oh, wondering. perfect. Okay, nice. so uh, Friday is Dick's Hat Band and Saints Analog. Saints Analog is not really from here, but yeah. uh, they're they're coming through. They're a good band from uh, I believe like San Marcos. Oh, okay. And then uh, Saturday is Red Shahan and. Charlie Shafter playing acoustic 
and Brandon Brandon Adams afterwards playing full band. Nice. So one one thing that I've seen, and, and maybe I'm wrong because I haven't spent as much time there, but maybe you'll agree with me. In a market like this, you could see people being very territorial and competitive. But man, I don't. I have maybe it's out mm-hmm. there. I haven't seen it. It seems like everyone is pretty good at collaborating and lifting each other up. Yeah. Is that a fair assessment? I I, I think like they, uh, like those those early guys. I feel like they, um, they really did a good. They've done a good job of, uh, keeping every like keeping each other in check as far as. Oh, that that song that you wrote there is not that good, or like that line you can do better on, and that kind of helped create a um, a, a formula for everyone to uh, to be friends and, but also be critical of each other, yeah. but not critical in a well, I can't believe whoever is doing better than me um, kind of way. I, I you know because. At any given point, somebody's doing better than you. Sure, yeah. And uh, but you can't let ever you can't ever really let that sink into what what you're doing because in reality, it really has no effect on you. Um, and no matter how bad or how horrible of a songwriter you think this person is, if they if they really do uh, become big. They're they're kind of they're they're gonna bring everyone from this area up in in some form or fashion. Yeah. Uh, but I, I really do feel that uh, just like everyone being critical of each other at the beginning when everyone was a, a nobody. And you, uh, I mean, are you talking like Terry Allen, Joey, well, I, I, that group? I, I think or? like uh, I think you could go far further back, further even back as 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 those guys. Yeah, uh, they probably did. You know, keep each other in line as far as yeah. Yeah, this is a little weak or you yeah. know, this is uh, well. Not and Lubbock on everything is kind of the album that brought all those people together. When mm-hmm. you talk Maine's Brothers, Flatlanders, Terry Allen, and from all the stories they tell in retrospect, is they were all helping each other out and making mm-hmm. it work and being a part of it and contributing. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I honestly feel like the the last ten years has been exactly the same, but like. You know, we won't talk about this era until yeah. 30 years from now. Sure. And, and that's partly what I guess one of my things is I, I don't want that to happen. I want that to, like, let's talk about it now yeah. so we don't, we're not always playing catch up. You yeah. Know? I think that's a great point. And, and you see that happen a lot in, in Lubbock um, where it seems like we don't celebrate what we have until mm-hmm. it's gone. Yeah. And then it's sort of a retroactive yeah. celebration. I, I, uh, I, I agree 100%, but I honestly kind of feel like uh, just the, the last couple of years I've thought, well, maybe we're kind of changing, you know, like because uh, Natalie Maines, you know, she was just inducted into the Westlex Walk of Fame. And I know a lot of people never, Didn't think thought, that would happen, yeah. never thought that day would come. And when I saw it announced, uh, I was even like, oh, is it April <laughs> Fool's right now? Or Because, you know, that really is a big deal. Yeah. She, she you know, she's a incredible artist and performer from Lubbock and there for so many years uh, everyone kind of decided she wasn't from Lubbock you know and uh, uh, and I'm, I'm, I don't think like they're like the that relationship between here and her are, are gonna be you know uh, fixed overnight but uh, you know you don't want uh, to have a, a statue of her in 50 years and Treating her essentially the same way we treat Buddy Holly today. Absolutely. You know? So we're, yeah, we're so just trying to pay back. You know. Absolutely, that is a good thing to see, and maybe that is sort of pointing to, towards the trends of us uh, celebrating what what we mm-hmm. got while we got it. Well, Thomas, thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you as well. Uh, the 24 Frames Podcast is brought to you by KTDZ TV, Texas Tech Public Broadcasting, part of Texas Tech University. Thank you for uh, listening. And of course, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Periscope, um, many, many different places. Thomas, what's what's the where can people find New Slang? Obviously, online publication. What's the address? Uh, www.newslanglbk.com. Uh <laughs> If you just Google search New Slang LBK, it, yeah. always, it always pops up. So, so that's a good place to find it. You do wonderful work. Thank you so much for all that you do well, thank for you again. our music scene. All right, we're out. Thank you. Thank you.